at the drops, and hope for the best. That's something many of us have done by now. But are rapid tests reliable? It's an imperfect test. <laughs> it's the best way to put it. Turns out they aren't that great when it comes to detecting Omicron and its variants. They're not a perfect answer. They're not as good as our lab-based PCR test in terms of the sensitivity. In other words, making sure that that negative test is truly negative. Test accuracy with past variants was 80%. But with Omicron, that's dropped to about 45%. And it's not uncommon, Evan says, to test negative a few days into experiencing symptoms. And that's just because of that unreliability, that sensitivity is lacking with some of the tests, um, certainly some of the common ones we use here in Ontario. But for most of us, rapid antigen tests are our only tool. Sometimes it's hard to get an appointment to get a PCR, which are obviously more accurate, but it's the best tool we have to, to test ourselves at home and give us the, all the information that we can have. So if you feel unwell but still test negative, it's best to stay home regardless. If they have any symptoms at all and they are all concerned that it is COVID-related, that they stay home and they isolate the best they can. Meanwhile, Evan says to keep testing a few days into the illness to check for COVID. Rapid tests are good. I don't want to diss them, but it's really important that people understand that they certainly have a lot of issues in terms of the accuracy of their results. And the best way to test is to go beyond just the nasal swab. Unfortunately, when people get these tests, all of them have been approved for nasal sampling, so people think that's the only thing they should do. But actually swabbing throat, cheek adds to it and makes it a little bit more accurate. Jessica Nisnik. Global News.